This is math 8, section 3.1, solving linear equations with one variable. Last time in class, in notes, we basically discussed the recalling prior knowledge, so things about some algebraic equations and how to represent fractions as decimals and stuff like that, as repeating decimals. So now we're going to start this section with solving linear equations with one variable. What we really want to get to do. Okay. So we've learned how to solve them with one variable. For example, you can do x plus x over 10 equals 44. And so that we're going to follow a few steps. So first, we're going to write all the terms with a common denominator. So if we have fractions, we want to give ourselves the least common denominator. So x, we're going to give it 10. So we'll multiply it by 10 over 10. And that gives us 10 over 10x plus x over 10. We could also write this as 10x over 10, if you want to write the whole thing as a fraction. And then that equals 44. Now let's combine into x. Combine x. So 10 plus 1 equals 11x. The bottom stays the same as 10, and that equals 44. So we just combined, we just said 10 plus 1. 10 plus 1, and that equals 11. Now you can multiply by 10 over 11. Because if we want to get rid of this 11 over 10, we just multiply it by 10 over 11. These cancel, those cancel, we're left with x because we want to put x by itself. And then 44 times 10 over 11. We can simplify by putting this over 1. We can divide that by 11, it's 4. Divide that by 11, it's 1. It just becomes 4 times 10. And then x is going to equal 4 times 10. x equals 40. And that's your answer. Let's try an example problem. Fresh sheet of paper. Example one. 3x over 4 minus 2x plus 1 over 4 equals negative 1.5. So we're going to learn to solve here for x. First thing you want to do is you want to rewrite this as just one fraction. So we already have the least common denominator. So let's rewrite this as one fraction. Combine. 3x minus 2x plus 1 over 4 equals negative 1.5. Now that we've combined, let's use the distributive property to kind of put, well, we already distributed it. The book says has that as two steps for you. All you need to know is that this, we're subtracting this whole thing. Therefore, this is going to be negative. And this will also transfer to this sign. So because this sign is positive, that becomes negative. Because that sign is positive, this becomes negative. Therefore, they're both negative. So use that minus to go to both, okay? There we go. Now that we've combined, let's simplify. We know that 2x, if we have 2x's, or 3x's, sorry, and we take away 2, so we start with 3, we take away 2, we're only left with 1. So 3, take away 2, we're left with 1. That becomes x minus 1 over 4 equals negative 1.5. Then let's multiply by 4. So multiply by 4, multiply by 4, 
those cancel, it becomes x minus 1, and that equals negative 6. Now let us add 1, because we want to get rid of the 1 here by canceling this. We're going to add 1 here. So that gives us x equals negative 6 plus 1, which is negative 5. And negative 5 is our answer. Try that on guided practice. 1, 2, and 3. Example 2. Write this repeating decimal, decimals fraction using a linear equation. Okay, we want to write a decimal as a fraction. However, the decimal is repeating. x equals 0 0.16 with a line over it. We could also say that as 0 0.16666. Not my favorite number to write, but that's okay. It's math. So we want to write it like this. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we assign the variable. So we pick a letter. That's x. Now notice, if I were to say to this side, I'm going to multiply u times 10. Well, x is confusing. Let's put a dot for multiplication. If I want to multiply that times 10, I'll also have to multiply that times 10. So it's going to be like 10x, and then multiplying this times 10 moves decimal. So it becomes 1.6. Repeating. OK, so if we do one thing to one side, we have to do it to the other. I was just both sides same. Okay, step two, after we've assigned the variable, we are going to subtract x from 10x to get a terminating decimal. Okay, so how we do that is we would say So we start with this equation. So we know this is true, x equals this. And we could say both of these sides are going to be subtract. We're going to subtract both of these things. Because this equation is true and this equation is true. So if we have equation 1 and equation 2. Let's take equation 1. x equals 0.16, repeating. And then we're going to take equation 2 and we're going to plug it in. So we will subtract the same thing from both sides. So if we subtract 10x from this side, and we subtract 1.6, repeating, from this side, then it's going to be equivalent. So how we can do that is we'll write it out like this. 10. x equals 1.66666 minus, and I didn't realize the book did it differently. They're going to do these as positive and those as negative, which is fine because you're keeping both the sides the same. So let's just write it as a more simplified fraction over here. Pay attention to this. Okay, x and 0 0.16666, repeating. Now, we're going to subtract these. So 10x minus x gives us 9x. And 1.6 repeating minus 0 0.16 repeating gives us 1.5000000. So for subtracting all the sixes, okay, so 6 minus 6 is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. The ones that finally line up, 6 minus 1 is 5, and then 1 minus 0 is 1. So that can give us what 9x is equal to. Then we just have to divide both sides by 9, and that tells us that x is equal to 1.5 over 9. Now, 1.5 over 9, you can't have a fraction on the top, so let's just multiply it times 2 and times 2, which gives us 3 over 18 and that can be simplified as 1 over 6. So we could say 0 0.16 repeating is equal to 1 sixth. Okay? What you're going to do? 
is multiply both sides by 10. First step. Then put that on the top. On the bottom, put your initial equation with x. Do the subtraction, do the subtraction. You get your equation and transfer that equation so that you only have x on one side. Figure out what the fraction is. All right, try that guy to practice. Um, four, five, and six. Last thing we're gonna do is solve real world problems with linear equations with one variable. So you've learned to solve real world equations. You need to represent these unknown quantities with variables and model the problems with algebraic equations. So for each thing that is in the problem, you're gonna assign a variable. So here, a belt costs $30 less than a pair of jeans. Okay, so as you read the problem, write out the expression. So a belt, itself is going to be whatever jeans is, well, a belt will be this portion of the box. So if this whole thing is jeans, then the belt will be the whole thing minus 30. Okay, so that's just imaginary. So the belt is jeans minus 30. So the ratio of the cost of jeans to the cost of a shirt is 2 to 1. So if we say jeans is this amount, then we would have to say that shirt is this amount. Because to jeans we have 2, shirt we have only one. So we can represent each of these boxes as x. We don't know what the comparison right here is yet, but we know that jeans, that equals belt, jeans equal 2x. Shirt equals x. So we have these equations so far. But this equation isn't really very mathematical, so let's use an equation to try to figure out what actually this is representative with only one variable, because we only want one. So if genes is 2x, all we have to do to find belt is put 2x in for genes. So it would just be 2x minus 30 is the belt. So now we have all of our equations. Belt equals 2x minus 30 jeans equals 2x and shirt equals x. So as you're doing it out, just write little visual representations like this and then you will use those to come up with your equations. Now we're trying, so it tells us the cost of the three items is $75. So we can make another equation. We could say belt plus jeans plus shirt equals $75. Now for belt, we could put in 2x minus 30. For jeans, we could put in 2x. For shirt, we could put in x, and that equals $75. Now we just have to take this equation and simplify it. So let's add the like terms together. 2x plus 2x plus 1x. 2 plus 2 plus 1 equals 5. So we get 5x. We're just going to make this into a 75 over there. Now we're going to add this 30 to both sides to get rid of it. Plus 30 plus 30, those cancel. This becomes 5x equals 75 plus 30, which is 105. Now if we divide both sides by 5, that gives us, those cancel, x equals 21. And so now we can figure out the cost of each of them. So the belt is going to be 221, because x is 21, minus 30, which equals 
2 times 21 is 42, minus 30 is 12. It doesn't ask us to find it, but we can. And then 2x is 2, put the x in, which is 21, and that gives us $42. And then shirt x is just the 21, so that gives us $21. So now we know how much each thing costs. Awesome. Example three. Mr. Gates' bathroom walls are 91 and 1 fourth inches tall. Let's say this is his bathroom wall. Now he wants to mount a mirror with a height of 28 and 1 fourth inches on the wall. So that is 28 and 1 fourth inches. That's how high he wants to mount it on his entire wall. Okay? The distance from the top of the mirror to the ceiling should be half the distance. So this distance should be one half the distance of the bottom of the mirror to the floor. So if this one down here is going to be x, this is one half of that. It's just one half of x. So we can represent that as one half of x, and that is x. Here's our shiny little mirror. Okay. So this is x. This is one half of x. We know this distance. We know that distance. So we can come up with an equation. Now, the whole thing, we see the whole thing is 91 and 1 fourth. That's going to be equal to this distance plus this distance plus this distance. So 1 half x plus 28 and 1 fourth plus x. So as you can see, we just have to take the whole thing. It's equal to that plus that plus that. And now we just have to simplify. So first, let's add the like terms. 1 half x plus x is just 1 and 1 half x plus 28 and 1 fourth. Okay, now let's subtract 28 and 1 fourth from both sides. Okay, these cancel. So over here we're left with 1 and 1 half x. On this side we are left with, mm, let's see, if we take out the 2, that gives us, because those cancel, 91 minus 28 is 63. So now we have to divide that by 1 and a half. Divide it by 1 and a half. So over here, we can see those cancel. That becomes x. Over here, in order to actually do this problem, let's say it's 63 divided by 3 halves. And that becomes 63 times 2 thirds. Because divided by 3 halves is the same as multiplied by 2 thirds equals x. So now we just have to that and two. It becomes x equals 42. Try that on guided practice. 7, 8, and that's all we have for today.